Hey, super scientists, it's Mrs. Doan here with Mrs. Stone Science Lab, and today I'm going to attempt to make a paper tree. Um, this activity I actually just learned um, at a webinar, so I went and learned something about a waste in place program, and they demonstrated one of the activities, which was making the, this tree out of upcycled um, paper that they found. And I thought, what a great activity to do while we're talking about food chains, because as you know, paper is made out of trees and trees are producers. So I just got a magazine that Mr. Doan and I were done reading. And I took from that, I ripped out six pages, right, and actually, um, borrowed these scissors from Mr. Dome as well as, um, he had these at work, and then this electrical tape, since I don't have just regular old scotch tape, um, or not even like packing tape or, uh, what was it called? masking tape nothing like that so but we do have electrical tape so hopefully it does the same thing so what we're going to do is we're going to take our first two pieces and i'm going to try it with overlapping the uneven edges first so you overlap them like so and then but not too far over just enough to where all parts of it are not touching or are covered basically. So no gaps. Then I'm gonna take this, it's about inch and a half, about, about two inches actually of tape. And I'm going to, let's see if I can show you. I'm gonna tape Up one over on the one side. So now it's like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. <sighs> so Hope y'all are having a great day. It's beautiful weather where you are. I hope you get a chance to go outside if it's, you know, safe for that and enjoy it. And y'all are still social, practicing social distancing and all that good stuff. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, all that good stuff. All right, so that's that first bit. And now I'm going to essentially do the same thing with the rest. So at this, this side, overlapping them and then taping it the top and the bottom. Getting lots of emails today. What that little noise is. If you hear it in the background, it goes boo doo. <sighs> so, and I hope y'all had a great weekend. Mr. Don and I stayed home, of course. And we ate on Sunday, we had a meal, a virtual family meal. So his sister and her husband and his, Mr. Doan's grandparents and Mr. Doan's mom's stepdad. We all got on our little, on a video chat basically while we ate food. <laughs> so. It's glad to at least see their faces.
back in, just overlapping. Hard to believe that you know April's already halfway over. Next thing you know, it's gonna be May. It's hard to believe this year has flown by. Oh. So if you have any of these kind of supplies at home you can do this activity as well. And if you end up doing this activity at home, it'd be cool if you uh, either take a picture of a finished product or maybe if you know how to do like video yourself doing this project too or your finished product and you can send that my way if you're one of my students and your parent has my email address so be cool to see y'all's finished products as well I'm still not used to it being so quiet, you know. Much rather be hanging out with all my students and learning awesome things. But this this will do for now. Last piece of tape. I'm being a little bit of a perfectionist right now. Sorry. So this is the finish step. If you don't have six pages, um, you can do like, if even if you just have like five or four pieces of paper. Um, and the main point also is let's try not to, um, you know, use brand new paper if you, um, if you can because the beauty of it is that we're using or upcycling materials that were already used so now this part um is where it would come in handy if you have an empty paper towel roll so you know you have your paper towels and then and then once you're done using all of them it's that tan um cardboard cylinder and so that would be helpful to have right now but I don't have one of those so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it up to the best of my ability without completely you know flattening that center part Again, I, I didn't test this out before I am doing this one with y'all. Maybe I should have. But I wanted this to be as real of an experience as possible. It's actually did a pretty good job with that. So it looks like this. Hollow. Kind of reminds me of um, gift wrap paper. Um, 
If you want to make it tighter, you just put your finger in there and then you just kind of twist and then it gets smaller, but I think it's fine how I did it. Now, while holding the base, you're going to cut downwards um, in four places, preferably like right across from one another. So. I'm just gonna cut down an inch or so. Doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm gonna go on the other side of it, directly across, and do the same. I'm gonna have a funky tree because it's not identical. Then on the, I'm gonna do this in half, cut this in half. Down, 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 and then directly across, down, down, down. So this is what it should look like right now. You see that I cut, I'm gonna like fan out. These represent the branches. Now the moment of truth. So if I did it right, then I would be able to make this appear as if the branches are growing so I'm going to reach down towards the center like so and then I'm going to just pull up that's so cool now my tree is growing and now remember what trees need and other producers need to live um, they need water, they need soil, and they need the sun, and if they get all of those needs, then they will grow and thrive. Uh, also, if they have enough space, because if plants get overcrowded, then they don't have enough space to grow, and that will cause them to not thrive or not get enough resources. And it can actually go back down too a little bit. So, but up and down. Huh. And yeah, and the, this producer, the, this tree, this magic tree, as the trainer called it when she taught me how to do this activity. Um, this, yeah, so this representation of a producer. It grow, you know, makes its own food through photosynthesis. It creates those sugars, and with the combination of water and carbon dioxide, which you know we breathe out carbon dioxide. That's why it's good to talk to plants. It gives them that extra CO2, and then that in sunlight, you mix it all together, and through photosynthesis, it creates the sugars. Um, which it uses some of that energy and stores the rest. And then the herbivores, or that first consumer, will come and eat some of the producer. And it will use some of the energy it got from that producer and it stores the rest. And then the next consumer comes along and that's just a continuation of the food chain. So yeah, this is really cool, guys. I'm glad it worked. <laughs> All right, and so until next time, so long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now, until we meet again, I say so long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now, until we meet again. Yeah, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Bye, guys.